Now, I mentioned earlier about the potato experiment. Remember the stomach lining of, that, of those rats? That was Dr. Arpad Pustai, hired to figure out how to test for the safety of GMOs. When he discovered that the process of genetic engineering was so dangerous, he went public with his concerns on a TV interview, supported by his prestigious institute, and then two phone calls were the next day placed by the UK Prime Minister's office, forwarded through the secretary to the director. <clears throat> the next day, Dr. Pustai was fired from his job after 35 years, silenced with threats of a lawsuit. His 20-member research team was disbanded. The data was pulled away. His house was burglarized, and the data he had in his house was stolen. And seven months and one heart attack later, the UK, the UK Parliament invited him to speak. They, they lifted his gag order. <coughs> he got his data back. It's now published. It shows these problems. But what it did also, and I opened my book, Seeds of Deception, with this, is it shows that on the, on the day that the director of the institute that had fired him told 30 Press that the restrictions on Dr. Pustai's speaking to the press had been lifted, they all left the room before he finished the sentence and rushed over to Dr. Pustai's house to finally be able to hear what he had to say because he had been gagged. 30 people filed into his, his living room and listened to what he had to say. Over the next month, over 700 articles on GMOs were published in the newspapers and magazines of the UK. Almost nothing in the United States. <clears throat> Within 10 weeks, Unilever said no more GMOs in our European brands. The next day, same with Nestle's. The next week, virtually everyone else. Same companies were selling GMOs to unsuspecting Americans. The tipping point of consumer rejection had occurred in Europe, but not the United States. So the Institute for Responsible Technology, which I founded in 2003, has been focusing on educating consumers about the health dangers, and I'm happy to say the tipping point is underway now in the United States. We're actually getting rid of GMOs more and more in these companies. <laughs> What's important now is to actually get people to switch not only to non-GMO, but also to organic. So I'm going to ask the AV people in the back to play the trailer for the movie Secret Ingredients, which focuses on organic, which includes non-GMO and non-Roundup. And then we'll come back to the slides and to your questions. Are you guys ready for that? Okay. I have no sound. So at the time that I was doing triathlons and living a healthy lifestyle, I met my husband. He also was very dedicated to healthy living. And we got married and started our family. So we had children and a brand new house. And we both had careers that we loved. And we were both active and physical. And that all came to a screeching halt in... August of 2007. I mean, after all, it's a poison. The biggest fraud in the history of science. And we are the guinea pigs. We had 21 chronic diseases in one family. I have had um, three miscarriages. Things like cancer don't just happen. They happen for a reason. We are losing control of our food supply. I've seen a rapid decline in children's health in the past 10 to 15 years. We had to rent the nebulizer so often from the pediatrician that she suggested we buy our own. My daughter was about eight years old and she was puffy and she was starting to develop breasts. His body was covered in rashes, head to toe, behind the knees, was so inflamed he was bleeding. Kids who can't control themselves, kids who can't transition, kids who can't focus, kids who can't sleep. A well-respected neurologist said that he would never speak and that he would never have peer relationships or social experiences, potentially not live on his own, never get married. Why is a chemical company in charge of the food? 
So many diseases and disorders have skyrocketed since the introduction of GMOs and Roundup in the food supply in the mid-1990s. Asthma, allergies, autism, ADHD, anxiety, autoimmune disease, and that's just the AIDS. The science is sound. The science is there. You just have to look at it. I've removed genetically modified food and had kids eat all organic food. No pesticides, no GMOs. And the changes I've seen are remarkable. So we went from, you know, your son has autism, your daughter has asthma, to no, they don't. It's been eight years since my uh, diagnosis. I compete in triathlons and I feel great. Her belly is completely flattened out and she's stopped that accelerated development. You know, she is where I feel like she belongs as an 11 year old little girl. Stephen now is an articulate, lovely, straight-A student with many friends, active, play sports. He participates in a mainstream classroom without any supports, no speech therapy, no articulation disorder, no physical therapy, no occupational therapy. He does all the things other children do with great ease and elegance and grace, and he is perfect. I am 22 weeks pregnant, and I feel fantastic. This shift can only come by a global desire to change our food supply. The removal of genetically modified foods, glyphosate and pesticides was the fundamental, the foundation for why we all recovered. Our families have been told a lie. You want to see it? Excellent. So go to secretingredientsmovie.com and sign up for being notified. If you are already a subscriber to responsibletechnology.org, we will certainly notify you the moment it is ready to distribute. And it is finished now. So it's now preparing for distribution. So um, I've got more to say, but I want to hear from you. I'd like to hear your questions uh, first. I'll repeat the question so that the people on the live stream can hear.